Well, if there's one piece of advice I could offer that people could do, I think, to help wildlife, honestly, I think it starts with just having an appreciation for other living creatures because everything then will come from that. Hi everyone and welcome to our second edition of Experts and in Insights. We're so excited to be able to bring this series to you virtually and give you some insights into the people that really make the Conservancy work. Our series is once again sponsored by V at Bentley Village and Collins Vision, so we'd like to send a big thank you out to our fantastic supporters. Can one person truly make a difference? In the case of Joanna Fitzgerald, director of the Von Arx Wildlife Hospital, there is no doubt that the answer is yes. She has been a steadfast force for conservation and the protection and rehabilitation of native wildlife for over 26 years here at the Conservancy. In fact, as many of you know, Joanna started as an intern at the Conservancy and rose to the position that she currently holds of director of the Von Arx Hospital. Over that tenure of over 26 years, she has not only made a huge impact on tens of thousands of animals' lives by overseeing the care and rehabilitation of those species, but also helped train hundreds of interns who have moved on to other professional positions in wildlife rehab, as well as thousands of volunteers who have also been involved at the operations of the Von Arx Wildlife Hospital. We are so grateful to Joanna for her passion, her expertise, her insights, and her leadership, but most of all, her commitment to Florida's native wildlife. Every day at the hospital, we are focused on two primary areas. We have all the animals that are already in our care that we are continuing to pro provide care for, altering their treatment plans um, to keep them moving through the rehab process. And while we're doing that, we have all of the new admissions coming in. We also have all the phone calls coming in from people who are trying to assess something that they're seeing. Is it really an animal that needs to be brought in? Um, is it a baby bird that's learning to fly or does it really have a broken wing? So it's just animal care on every level, but we are an emergency wildlife hospital. And so that's where um, the unexpected um, comes in, where you, you have all of the new patients coming in needing that intense medical treatment to start them on the path to recovering and, and hopefully to being rehabilitated and released. Basically, Joanna doesn't know it, but she's famous and we joke about it all the time. People love her articles and they'll bring in an animal and then she'll walk by and they're like, is that Joanna? And I'm like, yeah, that's Joanna. They're like, I love her articles. I read them like every Tuesday or whatever day it is. And I'm like, yeah, that's her. And so she doesn't realize it, but she's pretty famous. I started writing the article 15 years ago. I was actually just coming back from maternity leave. So I have a very good reference of how long I've been writing that article. The number of people who go out of their way to bring in an injured animal, sometimes they've hit it and they bring it in. They're very special people. And I think it's you can zero that right back to that blog that she does. Her presence and putting it on the, on the map has made people alert to the fact that we do have a place to bring injured animals. And so we get lots of them. Oh yeah, people will come in and ask to see Joanna all the time because they've read her article. A lot of people do read the articles and take away her messages. Um, I've had people bring in um, bunnies and they're like, I read this article about this cat attack bunny and my cat got this bunny, but I knew to bring it here thanks to Joanna's articles instead of putting it back in the nest and all this stuff. I personally <laughs> love the article. I'm amazed that even after all these years, Joanna can make an interesting article every single week. Well, I was reading Joanna's articles religiously. I'd send them back to my people in Minnesota and go, the Minneapolis Star Tribune needs to do stuff like this. Joanna makes it personal. Even find out about us, a lot of people were like, I never knew you were here until I read about this article. And I was like, yeah, like we are here and we're open whenever. People do read the article. Um, again, my daughter thinks I'm famous. <laughs> because people will say, oh my gosh, I love your article. Um, 
So it's very, very reassuring because the reason I write it is to help the animals. Um, if one person does something different and it benefits an animal, then writing it was well worth it. I still remember two elderly ladies coming in with a big opossum in this huge pet crate. And, um, and I get chills thinking about it because it was the first time someone ever said to me, I read your article and I knew exactly what to do. And that was amazing that this animal got help maybe by pe two people who never thought they could have done something like that. Um, so it's, it's a great way if it helps people at all understand a little bit more of the, the world around them and the animals that we're trying to, to coexist with, then it's definitely worth it. No doubt you, you are valued here and you have job satisfaction. It might be hard and it might be sad, but you see the rewards and how can you not um, be happy when you get to see that animal released or something is no longer in pain you've you've been able to relieve its pain and its suffering you know that's why we're here it, you really have to focus outside of yourself even if you are having a bad day you cannot let that affect what you're doing and certainly in wildlife rehabilitation it's not a nine to five job it, it's not an eight to four job it, you cannot watch the clock in this business you have to be all in when you're needed to be all in. So working in the, the wildlife rehabilitation field, it really does take a lot of heart and a lot of dedication and a lot of passion and a lot of loyalty to the wildlife and to each other. You know, you, that's a, a job you just can't leave at five o'clock if something needs to be done. Uh, you just can't say, well, sorry, uh, we're going to treat you tomorrow. We're not going to treat you today uh, to an animal that's dying or uh, will die if you don't treat it. This job is definitely really challenging and really exhausting a lot of the times. You know, we work weekends, holidays, long hours, everything like that. But it's also the most rewarding job I can imagine. This is the first time in my life I've had a job where I feel a strong sense of purpose. I want to come here because I'm making a difference in the world. This whole group is so um, selfless. My job, admin, is different than the other staff members where they're actually handling the animals. I keep the flow going in terms of what they need to use for medicine or food and stuff like that. And, and so I see how crucial it is to have these things ready for them and that makes me show up. It's not easy peasy work, especially the morning shifts because you're changing out the cages. <clears throat> you're cleaning, you're cleaning, you're helping feed, but you get to interact sometimes with, you know, help hold the animals or sometimes feed the animals. And it's strenuous because you're, you're up and down and, and it works your body and stuffing those, those million gallon uh, washing machines. And um, it's, it's strenuous but you don't need to go to a gym after you're done with that. You know, working in uh, wildlife rehab, you really have to have passion for it. And you're certainly not doing this for the money. It's a lot of long days. You have to have something to get you through those 12 hour days or the really, really difficult cases that maybe didn't make it. It's hard to euthanize an animal. It's, I say I'm sorry so often to these animals because it's not fair for them and it does make you feel very bad um, that you couldn't have done more to help them be released, but it's just not possible with some of the injuries that we, feel, we see. I hate when people say, let nature take its course. That's not fair to the animal. I don't, I always try to put myself um, either in the animal shoes or if people can't relate to that, think about your cat or your dog. Um, you don't want them to suffer anymore and you can provide your cat and dog with a kind death by taking to them to the vet and letting the vet help you out and I think wildlife should get the same kind of respect. I view humane euthanasia as a gift, pure and simple. It is a gift and in many instances it's the only gift we have left to give. It is very, very hard. People have just rescued an animal. It could have been a traumatic situation. Turtle getting hit by a car right in front of them when they were 
two feet from getting to save it and they just were five seconds too too short in getting there um, so I get it um, I do sometimes take it personally because they'll say are you gonna kill it no I'm not going to kill it if the animal can't survive and have a quality of life then humane euthanasia, in euthanasia is an option and people have to understand that these aren't your pets. What we do with these animals is always stressful for them. Um, they don't understand we're trying to help. You can keep a dog who has three legs. You can't keep a bobcat that has three legs and expect it to have any quality of life and not live in constant stress. It is a gift to be able to give a kind death and that's exactly what it is. And so here at the Von Arks, Euthanasia is as important as the rehab process. It is part of the process. We take the same care, we offer the same compassion, whether it's moving that animal to release or moving that animal into a kind passage. Euthanasia is a gift, and for me, it's the only way I can look at it. We get some horrific injuries, just horrific. These animals are suffering and painful. We get other animals that we've tried tried to save, and it's just not going to work. They're not gonna be releasable, they're not gonna be functional, there's gonna be no quality of life. And so at least, I say at least, we can give them a kind death. People would come in and call us murderers. It's something that you do experience as a wildlife rehabilitator. Um, they were in my face, inches from my face, um, shaking their finger at me, just over and over, just screaming that I was a murderer. Um, I remember it, it happened in the lobby. It was a very difficult thing because everything about you as a wildlife rehabilitator is to save every single animal that walks through the door. That is your goal. I do tend to get the most defensive when people start to say things about the staff um, in that manner. I, you have no idea how much these people care and how hard they work. Um, and until you walk a mile in our shoes, you can't possibly know how many tears we shed for these animals. And if there was anything we could do, we would do it. We'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Collins Vision for returning once again to be a sponsor of our Expert and Insight series and our evenings at the Conservancy. You know, community support and corporate support is so important for these types of programs. It means that you, our members and supporters, that your funds go directly into the mission work and the support from our corporate sponsors allows us to bring forward programs of a great quality and hopefully great insights to you to learn more about the mission. So thanks again to Collins Vision. Hi, I'm Pam Foltz, Community Relations Manager of V at Bentley Village, a type A life plan community in Naples. Although we can't join you in person for evenings at the Conservancy this year, we still want to show off our beautiful community and let you know we continue to support the mission of the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Until we can get together again, please take a look at our new website, vliving.com. That's viliving.com. We look forward to an educational and terrific series for evenings at the Conservancy and an opportunity to see you soon. It would be hard, I think, to do this job day in and day out if you had um, people who were not as committed as you are. Being a part of a team like this that actually gets to help these animals and hopefully at the end of the day we get to release them back into the wild it is a really good feeling knowing like we are all more or less like-minded and we're all striving for the same goal, trying to get these, these broken animals and fix them back up and releasing, releasing them back out into the wild. It's like the best feeling that you can possibly have, especially when you've been following this patient since day one all the way through and you finally he gets to go home. It's like the best thing ever just because you know you did what you've been set out to do. We're a great team and knowing that the people that we're working with all come in and are, are ready to give it their all definitely 
keeps you motivated. I feel really lucky to work with Joanna and my other co-workers. We have a really cohesive team. We really get along well together. You know, there's a sense of humor between all of us. You know, when you work these long days with these hard cases and sometimes really sad cases, you have to be able to love the people you work with so that you can really, you know, still have a good day on top of all that. And we've got a really good thing going here. And a lot of that is thanks to our leadership with Joanna. I certainly agree that it can be physically, emotionally, spiritually challenging, extremely challenging. But the work is what energizes you. And I think that's what drives most of us, is this burning desire to do good, to do good for the animals who come to us and to know that we're their help, we're their hope to return to the wild. And so that's what gives you the energy. You may go home and go, wow, I, that was exhausting. What a day. But while you're there, you're in the moment and you're really focused on those patients and those animals. And I think that's where the energy comes from. And that's what makes it so rewarding is that you know you're doing good. I've always loved animals ever since I was really small. I wanted to be a vet. And then when I learned about wildlife rehab and how I could contribute to conservation, but by helping animals and wildlife specifically, um, just really, once I started, I just knew that I couldn't stop and this will be a forever career. You know, just knowing that if you need to say, I need extra hand with that, they're gonna come help you and then you, you can get that done and, and you're, you're just working together. It's not like you're in this, um, this by yourself. You're not an island in this place for sure. One of the things that makes me really proud to work with my coworkers and with Joanna as a boss is the relationships we form with the volunteers, the other staff members at the Conservancy, and the people that bring in animals. We have over 200 volunteers and the relationships that we have built with Joanna as our example are incredible. She's always willing to get them in there with the animals, she's always willing to answer questions and teach them. Um, you know, it's really about getting people to surround you that love animals and their dedication and their passion to helping is just incredible. And I think these relationships are really the basis of the Conservancy and the hospital that we can um, support all these animals. The hospital volunteers are so important because we honestly couldn't do the work without them. Animal care is labor intensive and we have a small staff. Um, and, and when you think that we see over 3,500 animals a year, some weeks we have 200 animals admitted. You know, they're there to help us, not only just with the cage cleaning, but they're helping make diets, they're helping to restrain the animals while we're doing the medical treatments. If I can have a volunteer helping every, th every single staff person, that doubles our capacity alone in, in just being able to, to divide and conquer. Um, you know, if there's only one staff person to try and oversee everything, it's not possible. So being able to work in teams with those volunteers, they're out there picking up the animals for us, helping us do releases. We just honestly couldn't do our work without them. They're vital to, the, to, to our operation. Just being a part of the Von Arx Wildlife Hospital team as a volunteer is really important because number one, it's a group of very dedicated people, very talented um, professionals that we get to work beside. And my fellow volunteers are just amazing. They really are out to make a difference in our community. For me, it's like church, you know, it's, it's a really good feeling to know that I'm helping these animals and, you know, it's, it's a good feeling to, to do something good for, for something that's helpless. We have over 200 volunteers that help the Wildlife Hospital in some form, with a lot of them coming in to work with us hands-on one or two times a week. Um, these volunteers have been with us for years, even decades for some of them, and they are the most dedicated and passionate group of people I've ever met. Well, I keep coming back because it's such an amazing place. If anyone has ever worked with wildlife anywhere else, you don't understand what a gift we have here with the Conservancy. The volunteers are incredible. Here's these people doing anything asked of them, and some of the work is not pretty. I come to work and I know that something good's gonna happen. I mean, I love it, I just love it. And they work so hard for these animals. But what is a wonderful benefit of working here with the like-minded ones that you work next to is you make some really good friends. So some of the strongest friendships I have, and I hope they feel the same way I've made through the uh, Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Well, one of the things I'd like to say is thank God for the Benarxes. The gift from Dolphin Sharon 
for the new wildlife hospital, um, it's hard to put into words how much it changed what we do. To go to the new hospital where we have a surgery suite, we have radiology, um, we have a quarantine area, a lab, all of the things that you need to provide quality animal care. Philanthropy on the level that we see it at, here at the Von Arx Wildlife Hospital, it's unmatched. I, and I, I go back to that I've been in wildlife rehab a long time. I've seen a lot of facilities. This is unique in many ways. There are very, very few wildlife rehabilitation hospitals of this caliber. The fact that we have people like the Van Arxes in this town uh, is extraordinary. I mean, I don't think you could pull off what we do here in, in, in a lot of other towns. Uh, it's not just the wealth, it's the willingness to spend it in, in that regard. In other words, they have compassion. You can have the animals in the space that they need, whether it's the nursery for all the babies that need constant feeding versus in isolation where you can have an adult bobcat that's been hit by a car and just needs quiet and relaxation and, and calm. We used to have bobcats rehabilitating right next door to baby birds that are chirping to be fed every hour. So when you think of the, the different medical needs that the animals require, we can finally do that in a much better setting and, and meet their needs and, and, and know that we really are doing the best we can for them. But the philanthropy itself is what allows us to have all of this and to use it at the level that helps as many animals as need us. We are the only game in town. There is nowhere else to send these injured wild animals. And so we have to rely on that philanthropy and the goodness and the compassion of people like the Von Arks who are willing to support this kind of mission in, in our world. And to have that kind of compassion for animals, um, wow. It makes you want to have more money so that you can give more away. So I've learned so much working alongside Joanna Fitzgerald as a volunteer, but one thing I think that I have observed over the years is how consistent she is. I mean, this is more than just her passion, this is really her life. Well, I plan to probably be carried out on a stretcher from the hospital as long as she's there, all right? Joanna has been there forever and um, she has set the tone and you, you pick up on that tone very quickly the minute you start volunteering there. It's a tone of incredible, incredible compassion. I never ever doubt Joanna has the best interest of the animal at heart. Even if we disagree, I always trust her instincts and her judgment. And that, I can't tell you how important that is as a veterinarian, as a person who has to make medical decisions, is to know that the director is always on your side. If we ever have a problem, I know I can go to her and she's gonna fix it, whether it's to make my work life better or even sometimes my personal life better. And I think that's hard to find in a boss. Joanna is just an overall great person to work with and to know um, whether you're at work or if it's like a needing just an actual person to talk to, not work-related, non-professional kind of thing. She is always willing to take the time and actually talk to you and just see what's going on. So it's really important to me that Joanna is so approachable and then also just funny to keep the day in good spirits. She would never send somebody to do something that she wouldn't do herself. She has done everything that I can think of at this wildlife hospital probably thousands of times and she would do it again. When you're next to Joanna Fitzgerald in that examination room, you would believe that's the first time she's ever seen an injury like that on a little rabbit. She treats everyone like the first time. I don't know the word, but it's beyond passion. Working at the Conservancy's Wildlife Hospital through the years, seeing all of the changes has truly been a life-changing experience for me. It will always be with me. All of the extra hours, all of the great times, all of the times that were more challenging. 
will always stay with me, would always be a part of my life. Um, and Joanna will always be a part of my life. She was there when I started as an intern and she was there when I left as the manager. She, her compassion, her care for her staff inspires loyalty and I will always remember that and it's a huge part of the Conservancy's Wildlife Hospital. So if you do find an animal, we are here seven days a week. We are available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We only have one phone line, so please don't give up. If you call and you get the voicemail, leave a message. We can only answer one call at a time, but we will call you back and, and try and offer assistance any way we can. Um, we've made ourselves very available um, to, to try and help answer questions, but, but we need the help from the public um, in terms of letting your neighbors know if you hear them talking about a baby squirrel that they found that was cut out of the tree yesterday tell them you know what that animal needs and it needs to come to the conservancy you know you need to start educating if you know about us you need to ne let the next person you know know about us um, but we are here every single day even on the holidays even on weekends to make sure that the animals are are going to get the care they need